fun. From music, movies, theater, and sports, to health, politics, special events, and all things Santa Cruz, we bring it into 52,000 homes countywide. Voted best in programming by a Good Times Reader's Poll, we are the local channel. We watch locals doing everything under the sun and stars, and they watch us too. So why not let your advertising message reach our broad audience? Call 440-4070 and discover what we can do for you. Baseball fans and welcome. Joel Domhoff here waiting for my partner Kurt Edwards who we can assume will be here shortly. He's on Highway 1 I believe as we speak and what a shock there's traffic. So uh, we expect Kurt to join me momentarily. Meanwhile it's the Harbor High Pirates visiting the Monta Vista Christian Mustangs. Beautiful day for baseball. A slight breeze blowing in. It has been gusty of late but when we got here about an hour ago it was calm so we'll hope that calmness returns. Meanwhile, we're ready for baseball. Stepping into the box for Harvard, it's their leadoff hitter, right fielder Jeff Moyer. On the mound for Monta Vista, the big left-hander, that's Joe Manfrey. And the first pitch is low and away, ball one. Harbor comes in with a record of four and six in the league, eight and eight overall. They had a tough last three games. They've lost all of them, two of them by just one run. So Trying to get back on the winning track here as the fastball's high that time. 2-0 to Moyer. Lefty-lefty matchup here to open the game. I can tell you from experience that's not easy. That funky arm angle, it's tough to hang in there. It's uh, be impressive if Moyer can get on base. Takes a strike there. Home plate umpire calling that strike is Dave Meacham. And the man in blue running the bases, that's Bill Bunner. 2-1 pitch from Manfrey, forthcoming. Fastball fouled off, evens the count at 2-2. Two two. Harbor, despite their recent struggles, they do have Monta Vista's number. Four in a row, the Pirates have beaten Monta Vista. First time they've met this year, Harbor won by a score of 5-3. to three. So, in talking to Coach John Gillette before the game, he hopes that that magic against Monta Vista can continue here. 2-2 two -two pitch. Curveball on the ground to the second baseman for Monta Vista. That's Nick Simpson. Throws to Aaron Torchio at first. One up, one down. And the second man in the order for Harbor is their designated hitter, Mike Sintatos. Sintatos employing the high sock look here. Lots of green here on the field as we see. Manfrey in the motion. Curveball low in the dirt. Breeze has picked up and it's blowing pretty much in the hitter's face. So if they're gonna hit one out of here, they better hit a low two iron. Otherwise, it's likely to stay in the park. Ball low that time as Manfrey is falling behind both hitters. He's able to come back and get Moyer. We'll see what Sintatos can do with a 2-0 count. Hitters count here. Strike that time at the knees. Runs the count to 2-1. and one. Manfrey with an impressive breaking ball. Memo Torres, the coach of Monta Vista, wasn't sure if Manfrey would be able to pitch today, but Manfrey assured him after warming up he was good to go, and there's a fastball fouled off, and evens the count at two and two. Of course, Memo told me jokingly, laughingly, that uh, even if Manfrey was hurting, he wouldn't likely tell him. That's generally the attitude of these kids is they want to play no matter if their arm's hanging or not. Two-two pitch. Two Sintatos. Curveball. Got a piece of it. Stayed alive. Still two and two. 
The man behind the dish for Monta Vista to complete the battery with Manfrey is Jake Sturdivant. Around the infield, it's Matt Schaefer at third, Chase Glom at short, Nick Simpson, the second baseman, who recorded the first assist, and Aaron Torchio at first. We'll give you the outfield after this pitch. Strike three called on the inside corner. Beautiful pitch by Manfrey. Sintados goes down, two away. That'll bring up Blake Thigerson for Harbor. The Pirates shortstop. Outfield defense for Monta Vista. Jimmy Garcia in left, Brock Lindeke in center, and Colby Beeson in right. We'll see if the wind wreaks havoc on their play out there. First pitch is a check swing fouled off by Thigerson, so Manfrey gets ahead this time, 0-1. Two up, two down as the Mustang left-hander attempts to complete a perfect 1-2-3 inning. Get his team in the dugout and at the dish. Another foul check swing that time, so two pitches now for Thigerson that he hasn't really wanted to swing at, but has not been able to check in time, and as a result, 0-2 now to the Pirate right-handed hitter. Generally, the number three hitter in your lineup is your best hitter, so Thigerson does not want to get cheated here. He wants to get his licks in. 0-2 pitch. Curveball stays outside. It'll be one and two. Good 0-2 pitch there by Manfrey. Pitcher's sin. Cardinal rule there is to never give up a hit on 0-2. And and Manfrey avoided it there. That one was outside. We'll see if they come inside. Sturdivant sets up in there. Curveball fouled off. Count remains one and two. Almost hit the truck over there. Moving target. So the count remains one and two to Blake Thigerson. Top of the first. If you're just joining us. Blake Thigerson trying to get a two-out rally started for Harbor. The pitch. Curveball in the dirt. Got him swinging. Held on to by the catcher. Sturdivant. And it's a one-two-three inning. For Joe Manfrey, impressive. So that's it for the top of the first. One, two, three, Monta Vista coming up. Bottom of the first upcoming here from Mustang Field. Monta Vista's first trip to the plate against the ace for Harbor, the right-hander Byron Miller. He's the stopper for John Gillette, so hoping to end the Pirates' three-game losing streak that they brought into today's game. And who better to have on the mound than your ace? First pitch from Miller is a strike across the letters to Nick Simpson. He's the leadoff hitter for Monta Vista, the second baseman. He'll be followed by Matt Schaefer and then the pitcher, Joe Manfrey. 0-1 pitch. Fastball high that time. Count evens up, 1-1. One one. Miller with a real presence on the mound there. He's got the... Hat low, glove covers his face. 1-1 one, one pitch is a fastball swung right through it. 1-2 and two now to Simpson. A lot of players now sporting the high sock look, and Simpson another one of those. 1-2 one, pitch from Miller. Fastball high, 2-2. Two and two. Perhaps tried to blow that one by him a little too hard. As a result, lost it high, but... When you're heading the count, it's okay. 2-2 two, two pitch. Curveball popped up. Who's going to get it? Wynn could play Havoc. It's the catcher dropped. Jordan McCavitt couldn't handle it for Harbor, so second life for Nick Simpson there. Miller got the pop up, but not a surprise there, folks. It is gusting out here quite a bit. We may see a few of those today. McCavitt got a glove on it, just couldn't squeeze it. Count still 2-2, Miller in the wind. Fastball's low that time, so Simpson now with a full count. Leadoff hitter has done his job. If anything, he's made Miller work a little bit, giving the rest of his teammates a chance to look at Miller's stuff. Full count pitch. 
Fastball foul down the right field side, out of play. Down by the batting cages here at Mustang Field. The count still remains three and two. Simpson digs in. Miller gets his signal from McCavitt. Wind in the pitch. Fastball lined into right field, but perfectly played. Jeff Moyer out there to make the catch, so one up, one down. That'll bring up Matt Schaefer. Nice defensive alignment that time by Harbor coach John Gillette. He had his right fielder Moyer in tight. It's right where Simpson hit it. So Schaefer now at the plate, the third baseman for Monta Vista. First pitch is in the dirt, ball one. One thing about Miller we've seen early, he likes to work quickly, so it's always good to see, get to a rhythm. 1-0 pitch is lined in the right field, past Kevin McGuire for a base hit. So Schaefer, the first base runner of the game, as he gets a single to right field. That'll bring up the pitcher, Joe Manfrey. Nice job of hitting that time by Schaefer. Fastball outside, didn't try and pull it, just went with it. And the big guy at first for Harbor, Kevin McGuire, couldn't get down in time. And as a result, Schaefer's on first. The big left-hander for Monta Vista now, Manfrey, takes a fastball in, ball one. Looking for Schaefer's base running statistics here to see if he's a threat to go. He has attempted two steals and been successful both times. Swing, big swing and a miss by Manfrey. Count one and one. Monta Vista comes in to today's game with a record of 12 and three, six and three in league play, coming off a 6-4 victory over Aptos on Wednesday. The Pirates, meanwhile, had a bye, so a chance to rest up. The rest that is needed, according to John Gillette. A couple guys banged up. Runner goes, hit and run. Manfrey grounds to first. Tough hop, but McGuire handles it. He'll go to the bag unassisted. Schaefer advances to second with two outs. So Aaron Torchia has a chance to pick up a two-out ribby. Torchia, the cleanup hitter for Monta Vista. Torchio, excuse me. Comes in with a batting average of 286. Another left-hander as Monta Vista goes with their lefties against the right-handed Miller. Harbor's infield defense, it's Michael Parker at third. Blake Thigerson's over at short. Nick King's the second baseman. Kevin McGuire at first. Jordan McCavitt catching. And I'll give you the outfield after this pitch. Oh, and it beamed him up and in. That is a stinger. Torchio hit by the pitch. So two on, two out now for Colby Beeson. Outfield defense for Harbor. It's Ryan McNulty in left, Darren Thomas in center, and Jeff Moyer in right. Two out, two on for Monta Vista, and it's Colby Beeson. Comes in hitting 317. First pitch is way outside, ball one. Beeson, five doubles, one triple, one home run on the season. So he's got some power. Fastball fouled down the right field line, and they got the truck that time. They've had two shots at it, and they're one for two here. It keeps driving by, and that one plunked it pretty good. Count evens at one and one. And with two outs, runners going on contact. The base hit should score him from second. Fastball swung and a miss. Beeson that time chased the high stuff. One and two now, the count. Got him set up for a curveball outside. They go fastball, fouled off. Still one and two. Keep your hands high, huh? 
Miller throwing hard early. He has some velocity on the ball. It's clear as they're hitting everything to the right side when they are making contact. Beeson pointing his bat at the Pirate pitcher. Fastball lined into right field, base hit. One hop to Moyer, throws home. It's cut off by McGuire, play at the plate. Slide and he is out of there. Moyer to McGuire to McCavitt and they gun down the base runner, Matt Schaefer to end the bottom of the first. So the threat has stopped that time on a beautiful relay play. So at the end of one inning, no score from Mustang Field, back for the second in just a moment. Hey, check this out. Finding foods on the boardwalk, work with friends at the beach, flexible schedules, the league leader in employment for students and athletes. Whiting's Foods, a fun place to work. Check out the website, whitingsfoods.com. Family owned and operated for nearly 50 years. All those at the Yacht Harbor, tradition for 38 years. My dad built this business by bringing in fresh fish and by making fresh bread, pasta, and raviolis daily. And at all those bakery, you'll find baked goods fresh every day. My family has been part of the Santa Cruz community for over 50 years. My brother and I played high school sports. Our children are also involved. We know from first-hand experience these programs help our kids develop the confidence needed to move our community into the future. Join us for good things to eat. As a member of Congress, I'm proud to sponsor legislation for Metro Santa Cruz to provide for more buses, to build newer facilities, and best of all, to provide better service on the streets. Join me, Congressman Sam Farr, and make the Metro difference. Each year, people in Santa Cruz ride the Metro more than 8 million trips. Why don't you try riding the Metro Transit? Each and every day, Metro improves the quality of life for people in Santa Cruz. Metro makes a difference. American Writers 2, the 20th century, C-SPAN's critically acclaimed series continues its journey from the jazz age through Vietnam. Our history seen through the lives and works of America's most influential writers. Live Sundays, 3 p.m. Eastern and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern. American Writers 2, the 20th century on C-SPAN. Top of the second inning, no score. Leading off for Harbor, it's Darren Thomas against Joe Menfrey, and the first pitch is in the dirt, ball one. Recapping that play to end the first, a great play by Jeff Moyer to hit the cutoff man, Kevin McGuire, first, and then, of course, McGuire doing a great job of taking his time, setting his feet, delivering a perfect throw to McCavitt as there's a ground ball up the middle. Cut off by the shortstop, Glom, throws to first in time. One up, one down for Menfrey, who's faced four batters and retired them all. But again, and then McCavitt to do a great job to catch the ball, block the plate, and a nice attempted slide, actually, by Schaefer. Tried to go to the outside, but the ball just beat him there. Kevin McGuire, now the first baseman for Harbor, steps in to face Menfrey. Curveball in there, beauty, 0-1. McGuire, of course, one of the few bright spots for the Harbor High basketball team this season. Impressed me with his attitude and work ethic, despite the fact they struggled in the win-loss column. He played hard throughout. Strike two that time. Curveball high, but they gave it to him, so Manfrey quickly ahead 0-2. We'll see where he goes here with the 0-2 pitch. McGuire waggles his bat. And the pitch. Fastball crushed into center field. And it's misplayed by the center fielder. Goes over his head. McGuire can run for a while. Will he go for three? No. The third base coach wisely holds him up. But it's overthrown. Now he goes for it. Here's a play at third. They'll have him by a mile. Not a good play by Kevin McGuire. You never want to make the first or last out at third base. And that's what he just did. Let's go. 
Despite the fact that the cutoff man was missed, a heads up play that time by Glom, the shortstop, and Schaefer, the third baseman, and then Manfrey, of course, going over there to cover the bag and make the tag. So despite the double, McGuire retired at third, two up, two down. Ryan McNulty takes a strike, the Pirate left fielder. Oh one one pitch. Curveball stays high, one and one. McNulty standing in the front of the box, perhaps in an attempt to hit that curveball before it breaks too much. The pitch, fastball outside, two and one. And a wise decision, really, if you feel like you can catch up to the fastball, no matter where you're standing, step into the front there and get that curve before it drops in on you. No score, top of the second from Mustang Field. Manfrey the pitch. Fastball, he swung through it and missed it. Evens up the count at two and two as he chased ball three there. So now we'll see what Manfrey uses as his strikeout pitch. Sturdivant setting up right down the middle and that's right where he hit it. But the center fielder, Brock Lindeke, is there. So again, it's a three up, three down inning for Manfrey. He's faced six batters, retired them all. So we'll go to the bottom of the second, still no score. Before we begin the bottom of the second, we'd like to thank our sponsors here for the AT&T Game of the Week. First to Scarborough Lumber, to Whiting's Food on the Boardwalk, to Cardiff Pest Control, Aldo's Restaurant, the Spa Fitness Centers, Seacliff Inn Best Western, King's Paint and Paper, and finally the Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit District. Thank you one and all for making this game possible. Bottom of the second now for Mustang Field, and it's Jake Sturdivant to lead off for Monta Vista. Takes a strike from the Pirate right-hander Byron Miller, who got out of a jam with some help from his friends in the bottom of the first. There's a ball fouled up, and it'll just float out of play over the Pirate dugout. So Miller ahead, 0-2 on the Mustang catcher, Jake Sturdivant. Sturdivant comes into today's game, hitting 244. One double amongst his 11 hits, and the 0-2 pitch is in the dirt, ball one. Thankfully, the wind has died down significantly here. We'll see if it holds, but much nicer day, I must say, when that wind is not blowing. Fastball, he swung on and missed, dropped by the catcher, but they'll throw to McGuire at first. Does McCavitt, so one up, one down. Good start to the inning for Miller. That'll bring up the center fielder, Brock Lindeke. Both pitchers have shown good velocity here early, which I'm sure encourages their coaches quite a bit to see that. First pitch is a nice curveball for strike one. Miller gets ahead. As I told you, John Gillette considers Miller his ace, so I'd like to see a strong outing out of him today. Fastball foul down the right side. And again, he gets ahead 0-2, doing a great job of getting ahead of these hitters, which is what you want to do. Make them hit your pitch. Linda Key comes in hitting 310 on the season. 0-2 pitch, fouled in the dirt. Remains 0-2. Linda Key with five RBI on the season. Three doubles amongst his 13 hits. Hitting in the seventh spot in the order. Fastball. Fly to right field. We'll the wind has died, as I said, should be routine, and it is for Jeff Moyer. So two up, two down. That'll bring up the left fielder, Jimmy Garcia. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. 
Boyer's had two plays his way early, a fly ball and of course a base hit, which he started a 9-3-2 put out on home plate to end the first. There's a fastball over the head of Garcia, 1-0. and Garcia comes in hitting 500, yes, 500, 6 for 12 on the season. Fastball fouled straight back. Evens up the count, one and one. Monta Vista trying to catch Santa Cruz, and of course with a win here would solidify their hold on second place. So there's a fastball in the ice. Swing and a miss, one and two. Mustangs come into today's play, six and three as I said. Santa Cruz nine and one. SoCal in third at seven and five. So there's a fastball foul down the right side. Over our cameraman at first base. That does give me a chance to thank all of our crew here today. Our, today's game being produced and directed by Mark Ligon. Video technician Will Anderson. Our lady in the truck doing the graphics is Kirsten Fairchild. And I'll give you the cameraman in just a moment. Another ball fouled away. Do we have a truck over there to hit? We do, but we missed it. So we're one for three on vehicle assault here. Our camera people today, John Boucher, Woody Carroll, Kerry Rognaby, and Rick Yamada. There's a fastball high. Evens up the count two and two. Bottom of the second, two outs, no score. Harbor and Monta Vista. The pitch. Fastball strike three as he swung right through it in a three up, three down. Impressive inning that time. Two strikeouts for Miller. So at the end of two, still no score between Harbor and Monta Vista. You should know that Scarborough Lumber is one of the oldest and most community-oriented businesses in our region. From Pop Warner to the new Scotts Valley Falcons to the San Lorenzo Valley Cougars and Cabrillo College, Scarborough is there providing resources and support. Scarborough Lumber and Building Supply is involved because sports helps develop leadership and responsibility with our young people. From their garden store to lumber to hardware to building supplies, Scarborough Lumber and Building Supply working to make our community stronger and better. For nearly 30 years, spa fitness centers have been serving Santa Cruz County with the finest facilities available. If you're thinking of joining a health club, the time is now. No need to wait. We're ready now. Sign up now to join the area's most modern sports facility. Get one month for just $30. If your sports club is letting you down, sign up now at your nearby spa fitness center. Spa fitness center. Often imitated, but never duplicated. There are two King's Paint stores to serve you in Santa Cruz County with quality products at prices lower than box stores. He runs the SoCal store and tries to tell his brother Ron what to do. He never listens to me. Ron doesn't like to talk on TV. You'll find the best paints always at the lowest prices at King's Paint and Paper. They'll compete with anybody. Isn't that right, Ron? King's Paint and Paper, two great locations locally owned for 20 years. I should kill O'Neill for rat. Don't be stupid. Don't drink and drive. If you're gonna go out and have a good time, it's fine. But designate a driver to drive home. Let's stop the madness. Don't drink and drive. One day these rats were playing in the woods. One of the matches and that's no good. Yeah. You're a gorgeous sport. What you decide, don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. Yeah. Only you can prevent forest fires. Fire! Beautiful day here at Mustang Field. Another good crowd on hand for Monta Vista baseball. As we begin the top of the third inning with a called strike to the Pirate catcher, Jordan McCavitt, leading off. Six up, six down so far for Manfrey, yet he has given up a hit. As Kevin McGuire lined a double but was thrown out trying to advance to third as there's a strike on the outside corner. 0-2. Oh, yeah. Manfrey impressive thus far, moving the ball in and out. He's hitting his spot. Getting ahead of the hitters. The 0-2 pitch. 
curveball in the dirt, got a tapper back to him. Yeah. Easy play to the first baseman, Aaron Torchio. So a nice job of pitching again by Manfrey. That'll bring up the second baseman for Harbor, Nick King. Harbor in their road gray with green and yellow trim. The green number is 21, adorning the back of King. First pitch is a fastball fouled off, strike one. Manfrey again, getting ahead and moving the ball in and out. Gets his sign from Sturdivant. The wind, the pitch, curveball stays high, one and one. Manfrey three and two on the young season with an ERA of 4.75. Fastball stays high, two and one. Nice job by King to lay off that pitch. It's very tempting, especially for a young hitter to chase that fastball in your eyes. It looks so good coming up there. Tough to lay off, but he did that time. There's a fastball he couldn't lay off. That evens the count at two and two. It's, as I said, it's tough. It's like putting candy in front of a kid. It's just, you want to hit that ball. That seems like the best spot to hit it in. 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball hit the corner, strike three. Third strike out of the game for Manfree. Well, he's faced the minimum thus far, has the big left-hander. And Byron Miller now steps in for Harbor. Posing pitcher, see if he can do something here. Bat cocked, and the pitch. Fastball stays low, ball one. As you saw at the top of the inning, a nice crowd here at Mustang Field. If you're a basketball fan, you know they always bring the sixth man, and looks like they have the tenth man out here today. 1-0 pitch. It's a fastball fouled right over the Pirate dugout. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. I believe that's Kerry Rognaby on top of the first base dugout. That came perilously close to him there. We got to make sure we all stay healthy here. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hits the corner, 1-2. and two. Manfrey impressing me early, as I've said, throughout by hitting the corners. Nothing really down the heart of the plate thus far. That's why he's been dominant to this point. 1-2 pitch. They set up outside. Fastball. Blind into right field. Base hit. Great job of hitting by Byron Miller as he kept his hands inside the ball and lined it to right. So the second hit of the game for Harvard. Comes with two outs here in the third, and that'll bring up Michael Parker, the third baseman for Harbor. Oh, check that. Michael's being DH for so we're back to the top of the order with Jeff Moyer. I tried to get you in there, Michael. I apologize. So the leadoff man for Harbor has a hole on the right side to work with as they have to hold Miller. See if he can do something with it. He stands in the back of the box. Quick throw by Manfrey, but Miller staying very close to the base. Moyer grounded out to the second baseman, Nick Simpson, his first time up. They set up outside and the pitch. Fastball fouled straight back. So Manfrey working ahead. 0 and 1. So I look to my right, quite a few Harbor fans here as well. And always nice to see the support from friends, parents, etc. Especially on a day like this. 0 1 pitch to Moyer. Drop the curve in beautifully and 0 and 2. That was a knee buckler there, especially as a left hander, as I said. Tough to pick up that break and it's easy to bail out and 
that's essentially what Moyer did. He was, his knees turned into spaghetti there. Menfrey's got him set up now, 0-2, and, and he's got Miller, who broke to, from first, so now they'll get him in the rundown, and they'll just chase him down that time as that's the shortstop, Chase Glom, doing the running there as he got Miller, so not much of a rundown. He just outran the pitcher, so bailed out Moyer, though, because he had an 0-2 count, so he'll get to start the top of the fourth. Leading off with a fresh count, but after two and a half, still no score. Bottom of the third, upcoming. Beautiful hills of Watsonville here, as you see on a gorgeous day for baseball. And how about that? If there are any catfish fishermen out there, there's your spot right there, folks. Bottom of the third, no score for Mustang Field. It's Harbor and Monta Vista. Good pitcher's duel here between Byron Miller and Joe Manfrey. Miller to start the third to face the top of the order. Chase Glom. Bottom of the order, check that. Glom the shortstop for Monta Vista. Takes ball two, so Miller who got ahead of most of the first eight hitters falls behind here. There's a fastball on the corner, two and one. Glom comes in, one for eight, hitting 125, so clearly has not have enough of a chance to really show what he can do. There's a fastball fouled off to even the count, two and two. The right-hander for Harvard, Byron Miller, has been impressive thus far. He struck out two of the three hitters he faced in the second, got some help from his defense in the first, and tries to start the third by getting the Mustang shortstop. 2-2 Two -two pitch, fastball fouled off, and I think we're gonna go to one for four now on cars, as that one was about 30 feet away. A lot of foul balls here early. They've all gone to the right side, which shows you the velocity that these two pitchers have brought with them to the mound today. 2-2 Two -two pitch, another one fouled off to the right side, and it'll just get over the fence there. So it's still 2-2. Two two. Glom battling here to start the third. Not a lot of foul territory here at Mustang Field, so that certainly works to the hitter's advantage. 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball chopped over the head of Miller. Charging is King. Makes the throw, not in time. So Glom leads off the third by reaching on a infield single. Tough play. Once it got over the head of Miller, King had to catch and release it quite quickly. And as a result, the throw low. But I believe Glom would have beaten it regardless with his speed, so we'll give him a single. And now we go to the top of the order and Nick Simpson. Interesting to see now what Memo Torres does with the leadoff man on. Faked the bunt, did Simpson, took a ball high. A lot of things you could do here, bunt and run, hit and run, straight steal, sacrifice of course, so. Torres giving the signs at third. We'll see what he does. Another bunt. This time Simpson does get it down. Miller makes the easy play to first, so a successful sacrifice that time. Who's glommed to second. And that'll give Schaefer and Manfrey a chance to plate the first run of the game. Schaefer has a hit in today's game. He singled to right field in the first and was the man thrown out at home on the nice play by the Harbor defense. Takes a fastball in the outside corner, strike one. See if Miller can work his way out of a jam or if the Mustangs can strike first. The stretch, the pitch, fastball. No, actually that had a little something on it. It dropped a bit. Swung over the top, did Schaefer, and it's 0-2. 
two strikes now, he's just going to be looking to make contact here. Put it in play somewhere, force the defense to make a play. And he fouls it off towards the hitting cages, which are well protected, so no harm over there. It remains 0-2. Schaefer hitting 216 on the season coming into today's game, but as I said, he's one for one today, so perhaps looking to bust out here. Miller patiently gets his sign, a fastball at the head of Schaefer, who leans out of the way. One and two. That's about where he wanted to put that 0-2 pitch. You don't want to put it too close to his head, obviously, but Good to go up and in to set him up for something away. See if McCavitt's thinking the same thing. Fastball, grounded to the right side. King boots it off his, the heel of his glove, around the bag to score. Will be Glom with a hit first slide. One nothing, Monta Vista. Tough luck for the pitcher Byron Millers. He got the ground ball he wanted. Nick King unfortunately couldn't come up with it. So the unearned run gives Monta Vista the lead. Safe at first is Schaefer on the air. So a nice job by the ninth hitter Chase Glom to get on base. And get in to score for Monta Vista. Menfrey now hits a double play ball, and King boots it again. Oh, this is tough to see. Nick King, back-to-back -back errors, puts two on for Monta Vista, so tough break. As I said, from a pitcher's perspective, he's doing his job, but it happens. So now Torchio with a chance to give his pitcher Menfrey a couple runs to work with here as they've got two on with one out. Tortillo was hit by a pitch, his first at bat in the bottom of the first. They throw over to first behind the runner. A sneak play, but Menfrey got back in time. Got his uniform dirty in the process, but he's all right. It's a smart play by Harbor. Perhaps keeps him a step closer, so if there's a double in the gap, he may not score. Fastball inside, ball one. That's what makes baseball such a great game, the subtle little things that happen, one throw over. Maybe in the difference between a, a run and an out at the plate, it just puts it in Menfrey's mind that they could be coming behind me and as the pitcher he doesn't want to be doing too much running and diving anyway so it's a fastball high 2-0 and oh now Tortillo has not seen a strike he was beaned in the first and seen two balls here left hander right on top of the plate waggles the bat ground ball left side shortstop is Thigerson to King for one, throw in the dirt. McGuire can't pick it. And that'll plate another run for Monta Vista. It's coming around to score is Matt Schaefer, and it's 2 nothing Mustangs. And Byron Miller, you deserve better, my friend. Got the double play ball. Thigerson with a nice flip. King threw it in the dirt, and unfortunately, McGuire couldn't pick him up there, so there's a gust of wind, a swirl of wind. Blows in our face, blows dirt in our face as well, so 2 nothing Monta Vista, two unearned runs, and Colby Beeson will be the batter for Monta Vista. Beeson grounded a single to right, his first at bat, which set up the play at the plate where Schaefer was thrown out. There's a fastball line foul 
behind the first base dugout, so the count even now at one and one. Two out, one on, two in for Monta Vista. Beeson takes one up in his eyes. Two and one the count. Colby came in, as I told you before, hitting 317, and he got the hit in the first. Confident looking hitter in there as he waggles the bat, the pitch. Curveball stayed high, so the count runs to three and one now. With Jake Sturdivan on deck. Don't want to walk Beeson here to put another man in scoring position. 3 1, he got the green light, popped it foul. And that'll run the count full, which will give the man on first, Torchio, a chance to take off with the pitch now. Three and two, two outs. Bottom of the third. Beeson took a good hack there on 3 1. 3 2, that's a ball chopped to the left side. Shortstop over there is Steigerson, and he throws it into our truck. Another error by the Pirate infield, the third, fourth of the inning, which allows the runners to advance two bases, puts Torchio at third, Beeson at second. So Sturdivant now could really open this one up with a base hit. Tough play for Thigerson. It was a chopper of a ball. It didn't have a lot on it, so he had to range to his right and get it and get rid of it quickly. And as a result, he rushed the throw. And even the 6'5 Kevin McGuire had no chance at that one. I don't think Minute Bowl had a chance at that one. And John Gillette goes out to the mound to try and settle his pitcher, Byron Miller. And as I've said, Miller's done his job, but I'm sure Gillette just telling him the same thing and reinforcing that he's doing his job and don't worry about it and focus on the next hitter. So a key point in the game comes early. It's 2-0, two, two on via errors. Two have scored via errors. And Miller wants to stop this right here to give his chance to come back. The way Manfrey has pitched early on for Monta Vista doesn't appear as if it'll be a high-scoring game. Sturdivant struck out in the second inning. And with runners on second and third, Miller can go to the windup. And now chooses to go to the stretch. Mustang catcher Sturdivant takes a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. 244 his average coming in. Oh one pitch. Fastball, a little bleeder up the middle. Who's gonna get it? King picks it up, throws, McGuire gets it, and they get out of the inning. Nice play by Nick King. Redeems himself a bit. And that'll do it. Two runs for Monta Vista on four errors and I count one hit, so tough inning for Byron Miller. 2 nothing Monta Vista, top of the fourth coming up. Hey, check this out. Foods on the boardwalk. Work with friends at the beach. Flexible schedule. The league leader in employment for students and athletes. Whiting's Foods, a fun place to work. Check out the website, whitingsfoods.com. Family owned and operated for nearly 50 years. All those at the Yacht Harbor, a tradition for 38 years. My dad built this business by bringing in fresh fish and by making fresh bread, pasta, and raviolis daily. And at Aldo's Bakery, you'll find baked goods fresh every day. My family has been part of the Santa Cruz community for over 50 years. My brother and I played high school sports. Our children are also involved. We know from first-hand experience these programs help our kids develop the confidence needed to move our community into the future. 
destroyed us for good things to eat. As a member of Congress, I'm proud to sponsor legislation for Metro Santa Cruz to provide for more buses, to build newer facilities, and best of all, to provide better service on the streets. Join me, Congressman Sam Farr, and make the Metro difference. Each year, people in Santa Cruz ride the Metro more than 8 million trips. Why don't you try riding the Metro Transit? Each and every day, Metro improves the quality of life for people in Santa Cruz. Metro makes a difference. American Writers 2, the 20th century, C-SPAN's critically acclaimed series continues its journey from the jazz age through Vietnam. Our history seen through the lives and works of America's most influential writers. Live Sundays, 3 p.m. Eastern and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern. American Writers 2, the 20th century on C-SPAN. drenched crowd here at Mustang Field watching the Mustangs, the host team, scoring two in the bottom of the third to take that two-nothing lead into the top of the fourth. Leading off for Harbor, it's their leadoff hitter, Jeff Moyer. He butts, nice drag, nice idea, but it goes foul. So the count 0-1. Moyer was at the plate in the third inning when Byron Miller, who had reached first on a single, was picked off. So Helped Moyer out though. The count was 0-2 at the time, so I'm sure he wasn't too unhappy about that play. 0-1 here, lefty lefty matchup. Time called by Moyer. He grounded out to the second baseman Nick Simpson his first time up. And the two base running errors have allowed Mantry to face the minimum. Nine up, nine down, thus far. Way outside that time, one and one. Manfrey now with this two-run cushion can be a little more aggressive than he already has been. He's shown me early that he, he will attack these hitters, but now he can really just go after them. The one-one to Moyer, fastball fouled off. Manfrey gets ahead, one and two. Manfrey, an intimidating presence on the mound, the high socks, the big build, the sideburns, the cap pulled low. Easy to see why he's dominated to this point. Curveball, big breaker, too far actually, as it went out of the zone, two and two the count. So Moyer will just try and slap it somewhere to get on base. He'll be followed by Mike Sintatos and then Blake Thigerson is at the top of the order here for Harbor in the fourth. The pitch. Curveball high that time, so Moyer's done a good job to work this count full. He fouled off a couple tough pitches and he's making Manfrey work here. Last thing Manfrey wants to do is walk the leadoff hitter with a two-run lead. Fastball right down the middle, fouled off. And nice hustle that time by Matt Schaefer to no avail as he ran out of, didn't run out of room, he just ran out of time as the ball fell before he could get there. So still a full count to the Pirate right fielder. Top of the fourth, 2-0 Monta Vista. 
Harbor trying to break a three game losing streak and continue their mastery over Monta Vista. They've beaten the Mustangs four times in a row. Fastball that time is grounded into left field for a base hit, so a great at bat for Moyer to start the fourth for Harbor. Real impressive at bat that time, especially as I said, it's always tough, lefty, lefty, but he was able to keep his hands inside the ball, put it to the left side, and found a hole, so now John Gillette has a few decisions to make with his leadoff hitter on. Monta Vista and Memo Torres were able to turn their leadoff hitter to Nick Simpson, excuse me, Chase Gloms, reaching first in the third inning into two runs by putting a bunt down. So we'll see what Mr. Gillette has in mind on the harbor side. Thigerson 0 for 1. He struck out in the first, one of two strikeouts in that first frame for Manfrey. He since added one more. Throw to first. Moyer close to the bag, not even close. But it keeps him honest. Santatos takes a strike on the outside corner, 0 and 1. To Manfrey's credit on that last at bat, he didn't want to walk. Moyer, so he put it in there, forced him to put it in play. It's always the walks that come back to kill you. I know as a pitcher, I used to just kick myself for doing that. Inevitably, it would come back to haunt you. Sintados takes a ball outside. Count evened up at one and one. Tato's also a pitcher, as well as an infielder. He's DHing today, is the senior. Fastball right up the middle. Off Manfrey, picks it up in time and throws the first. Looked like it hit him in the thigh that time. Nice piece of hitting by Sintatos. And I believe they're gonna come out and take a look at Manfrey to make sure he's all right. Crowd imploring Manfrey not to rub it. As that play advanced Moyer to second, so man in scoring position for Thigerson, Thomas, and McGuire, the meat of the Pirate lineup. Well, Jake Sturdivant is certainly confident that his pitcher's all right, as he's already left the meeting, but Manfrey's still out there with both of the umpires and his pitching coach. He runs it off here to second and actually in the middle of the fourth inning, this allows us a chance to once again thank our sponsors for today's game help make this AT&T game of the week possible. No fans and family and all that, all those types of people love to see this stuff. First to Scarborough Lumber, to Whiting's Foods on the boardwalk, to Cardiff Pest Control, to Aldo's Restaurant, and the Spa Fitness Centers, Seacliff Inn Best Western, King's Paint and Paper, and finally, Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit District. Thank you one and all for your support of the game of the week. Manfrey's all right, and we're back to action. First pitch is a curveball in there for strike one to Blake Thigerson. The shortstop for Harbor struck out to end the first inning. So Manfrey appears healthy if that first pitch was any indication. Fastball hit to the right side. First baseman over there is Torchio. He picks it up, goes unassisted to the bag for the second out. Moyer advances to third. Two outs, and Darren Thomas will try and pick up a two-out ribby. 
Nice piece of hitting by Thigerson went with the outside fastball, just couldn't find the hole. And Aaron Torchillo made a nice pickup over there at first because it was hit hard. Thomas now the cleanup hitter for Harvard. He grounded out to shortstop his first time up. Curveball topped into the ground for strike one. So Manfrey trying to work out of a bit of a jam. He allowed the leadoff hitter to reach base, but he has since gotten two outs. He'll try and get Thomas to keep the shutout going. Hint of a breeze now, but far less than the gusts we survived earlier. Manfrey in the wind. Took something off that one and fooled Thomas badly. 0-2 the count. Nice pitch by Manfrey. He pulled the string that time. Tied up Thomas on the inside. If he'd have made contact with that, his he'd still be screaming in pain. His hands would, would have been ringing there. 0-2 pitch from Manfrey. Fastball on the corner, but a bit too far outside, according to the home plate umpire, Dave Meacham. So it's one and two now. Two, mu two nothing Monta Vista, top of the fourth. Jeff Moyer on third with two outs. Darren Thomas with a 1-2 count. Try and deliver a run for Harvard. The pitch. Fouled straight back, remains one and two. Nice cut by Thomas. You wouldn't know it was two strikes by the velocity of that swing. He's not getting cheated. And why should he? He's the cleanup hitter. He's got to get his hacks. Manfrey looks for his sign from Sturdivant. He likes what he saw, and here's the pitch. Curveball again fouled off, so Thomas fighting off some tough pitches to stay alive. Count remains one and two. Kevin McGuire on deck should Thomas reach. Certainly John Gillette and the Harbor fans who have made the drive would love to see that. Give their big guy a chance to maybe pop one out of here. One two pitch to Thomas. Curveball got away from him. Two and two now. The count evened up. So Thomas, if anything, is if nothing else, is making Manfrey work to get out of this one. He let the leadoff hitter get on. He took a line drive off his leg. So it has not been an easy inning as the first three were. The fourth has been a struggle. Thomas waggles the bat. Here's the pitch. In the dirt, ball three. Nice job by Sturdivant to keep that in front. Moyer was dancing off the bag, ready to come as soon as he saw that pitch go by. But Sturdivant kept it in front and thus kept Moyer third. Count is full now to Darren Thomas. And Memo's going to come talk to Manfrey before he delivers this 3-2 pitch. And I'm sure what Memo's telling him is you don't have to give in here. You've got an open base. There's no need to give him his pitch. Give him your pitch, and if he chases fine. If he takes the walk, then deal with McGuire. Conference is over. While that happened, uh, Thomas also spoke with Gillette, so Coach John Gillette. So all sorts of strategy going on here in a two-nothing game, top of the fourth. Manfrey winds the pitch, curveball again, fouled by Thomas. An impressive at bat for the cleanup hitter. That's three or four foul balls now that he's been able to. Just get pieces of these pitches to uh, to stay alive. Manfrey 
gets the sign, and again the 3-2 pitch. Curve ball, and again it's fouled off, so Darren Thomas, that's four now, four foul balls. He is staying alive, impressive at bat, trying to plate the first run of the game for Harbor. They trail 2-0 on a four-error inning in the third. Allowed Monta Vista to get those two runs. Thomas trying to pick his team up and get him back in it. 3-2 pitch once again. Fastball, ball four, high and outside. So a great at bat by Thomas. Puts two on for Kevin McGuire. And guess what, folks? The Highway 1 traffic has apparently subsided because my man Kurt Edwards has made it at last. Kurt, welcome. Oh, it's good to be here, Joel. I had land speed record from Pasa Tiempo to the fish hook in 45 minutes. Not bad. And then it took me another hour to get to Soquel Avenue. <laughs> well, as I said at the top, no one will be surprised to know that there was traffic. We figured that was the case. Well, you've missed a, uh, a well-pitched game on both sides. Joe Manfrey for Monta Vista has been impressive thus far, as has Byron Miller of Harbor. Four errors in the third inning, though, allowed Monta Vista to score twice, so they enjoy that 2-0 lead. And Manfrey trying to work out of a jam here. There's a grounder up the middle, but a nice, easy hop for Nick Simpson, who steps on the bag to end the fourth inning. So it was a bit of a struggle, but they got out of it again. No runs for Harbor. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Monta Vista with a 2-0 lead. Bottom of the fourth here for Mustang Field. First pitch to the Mustang leadoff hitter, Linda Key, was fouled off, so it's 0-1. Miller working quickly and working ahead as he's now ahead 0-2, another foul ball. Linda Key fly to right his first at bat. Well, Joel, one thing you know as a, being a pitcher, if you can work quickly, you can set the tempo for the defense, and they're not going to be falling asleep on their heels. And if you do it just at about the right tempo, you can rush that hitter to start to get them to back in and out to mess with your rhythm. But if you're in control, like Miller seems to be, you just stand out there on the hill and just throw BBs. Off-speed pitch. It's into right field where Moyer camps under it. So one up, one down here in the fourth. That'll bring up Jimmy Garcia, the left fielder. Nice, easy fly ball. Wind blowing here. Slightly in from left field, but I like the fact that Moyer's first step was back. Got a good read on it, and then came right through the fly ball. Even though it's a routine first out fly ball, do the techniques every time. Garcia, strikeout victim, his first at bat. Grounds to the right side. King picks it up, throws to McGuire. Two quick outs here in the fourth for Miller. And now that'll bring up Chase Glom, who began the rally in the third inning by reaching base. Well, I'll tell you, as a pitcher, you love to get real quick in and out. That does a lot for your defense, because they don't want to stand out there very long. It does a heck of a lot for your offense. You can get them back in there with the bats in your hand. And Chase Glom coming up, just a freshman, just recently brought up, was brought up last week, just does a great job defensively. He's been impressive thus far. And as I said, he started their rally in the third, so getting on base, the freshman did his job. First pitch was a ball in the dirt. The 1-0 pitch is fouled straight back, evening the count at 1-1. One one. Well, you can go after young freshmen, and, and if I'm Miller, I'm going to come right on after him and try and jam him inside. But if anybody knows the Glom family history, they've got some pretty good athletes. His, uh, his dad, Steve Glom, played at UC Riverside for a while and an Aptos High School graduate. Uh, I, I think they had a field then. I'm not, I can't ever remember how long ago that was. Steve will probably come after me. And Steve and I actually competed against each other in college. Uh, yes, there were cars invented then. Glom fights off the one-two pitch that time to stay alive as Miller working ahead. Yeah, I remember watching Doug Glom. Oh yeah, I had I coached Dougie. Uh, Doug at Aptos. I mean, the whole family thing is right in front of me now. So, played against the father, coached the uncle, and now I get a chance to watch the son. Miller attacking Glom and fights it off to McGuire. Able to fight off the win. So that completes a 1-2-3 bottom of the fourth at the end of four. Monta Vista 2, Harbor nothing. Monta Vista
You should know that Scarborough Lumber is one of the oldest and most community-oriented businesses in our region. From Pop Warner to the new Scotts Valley Falcons to the San Lorenzo Valley Cougars and Cabrillo College, Scarborough is there providing resources and support. Scarborough Lumber and Building Supply is involved because sports helps develop leadership and responsibility with our young people. From their garden store to lumber, to hardware to building supplies, Scarborough Lumber and Building Supply is working to make our community stronger and better. American Writers 2, the 20th century, C-SPAN's critically acclaimed series continues its journey from the Jazz Age through Vietnam. Our history seen through the lives and works of America's most influential writers. Live Sundays, 3 p.m. Eastern and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern. American Writers 2, the 20th century on C-SPAN. nearly 30 years, spa fitness centers have been serving Santa Cruz County with the finest facilities available. If you're thinking of joining a health club, the time is now. No need to wait. We're ready now. Sign up now to join the area's most modern sports facility. Get one month for just $30. If your sports club is letting you down, sign up now at your nearby spa fitness center. Spa fitness center. Often imitated, but never duplicated. There are two King's Paint stores to serve you in Santa Cruz County with quality products at prices lower than box stores. He runs the SoCal store and tries to tell his brother Ron what to do. He never listens to me. Ron doesn't like to talk on TV. You'll find the best paints always at the lowest prices at King's Paint and Paper. They'll compete with anybody. Isn't that right, Ron? King's Paint and Paper, two great locations locally owned for 20 years. As I said, a beautiful sunny day here at Mustang Field. The crowd surviving the winds and watching the home team take a 2-0 lead into the fifth inning. Joe Manfrey still on the mound for Monta Vista. He's been impressive to this point. He faces Ryan McNulty to lead off here and got strike one on him right away. One of the great things you can do as a pitcher, get strike one. There's a fastball fouled way late was McNulty, so quickly it's 0-2. Well, Manfrey that time got a pitch up. Got it, uh, McNulty got a real good look at it, but was unable to pull the trigger. It shows me that uh, Manfrey's got just a little bit of a giddy up on that fastball. He's been impressive thus far with the fastball and a big hook of a curve. There's a curve that's chopped foul by McNulty, so the count remains 0-2. Pirate left field are trying to get on base here to get something going. They trail 2 nothing on two unearned runs. And it's when it's going bad, they've lost three in a row, Kurt. That inning in the third that you missed was tough to watch as a fan. You like to see a well-played game. If someone's going to win, win it with hits and great plays. And unfortunately, the infield made four errors, which allowed Monta Vista to score. There's another ball chopped foul. So... We'll see if Harbor can get back in it. Well, if one thing John Gillette does bring to the ball club, he's the skipper there for the Pirates. He's got a good, positive attitude, so he's going to stay bringing that positive attitude with the rest of the Pirates. And one thing that I've learned from over the years, airs tend to rain. If you start losing your concentration uh, or squeeze that thing a little bit too hard because you're not going to make the next air, I can almost guarantee you, you will. Good 0-2 pitch that time, up and out of the zone. McNulty didn't chase it, so it's 1-2. and two. Monta Vista with this 2-0 lead, as I said, they're 12-3 and three overall, 6-3 and three in league play. Memo Torres telling me before the game they're ranked number 10 in Division 3 for the state and number 15 in the Mercury News CCS ranking. So nice to see the local teams getting some pub outside of the area. We've got some pretty good local teams. Of course, Kittle over at uh, your stomp, old stomping ground, Santa Cruz has really got that ball club up and running, and he's found a way to figure out how to pull wins out of the back end of your pocket when you need to, and that's the mark of a champion. Memo Torres, a veteran coach here, he's got a good group of uh, supporters for parents, and this program has really picked up over the years. One, two pitch, he painted the corner, strike three called, so... McNulty goes down looking to begin the fifth. That'll bring up Jordan McCavitt, who 
hit a comebacker in the third. He's 0 for 1. Yeah, what you've got to do with somebody such as the big guy on the hill, Manfrey, is you know look for look for a pitch early in the count that you can drive and then take that thing. If you get deep in the count on him, he's he's got the capabilities of nickel and diamond you to death. He's been impressive, Kurt, as you see there, hitting the corners. He hasn't had anything in the middle of the plate. Nah. Worked it in and out, up and down, and he's really had these hitters guessing as he gets ahead there 0 and 1, but he's really impressed me with his ability to hit his spots. He said he does a nice job and start event right behind there. Watch out. He just slides out at the last minute, doesn't tip the hitter off, stays nice and comfortable, tucked up underneath the hitter, and then slides out or slides in wherever that pitch is going to have to go. That's one of the things that as a catcher, you know, hitters, we, you, know, you try and take a peek as best you can. You try and get a feel for where that catcher's going with it, so you, you may be able to get a jump on the pitch. 1-1 one, one pitch, he checked his swing, and the home plate umpire Dave Meacham believes that he swung, so it's 1-2 and two now. Mantry again working ahead, and that curveball had some bite on it. Oh, you've got to love that. A good curveball with a bite, he can set it up, take that thing down to the dirt, run a fastball up underneath your hands secret to be an effective pitcher obviously is control but also spotting the ball one two pitch curveball in the dirt he just got a piece of it to stay alive and i mean just a piece yeah just barely that had knuckleball written over maybe it was a knuckle curve because that thing had a, a a lot more thread showing that was coming up and had a little wobble and bite to it and typically on a windy day knuckleballs don't knuckle real well of course, I never had a knuckleball, and fastballs didn't fastball real well sometimes with me. One-two pitch. Got him swinging for another strikeout, his second of the inning, his fifth of the game. Two up, two down. That'll bring up Nick King. Nick King, the second baseman. We watched him make a nice defensive play there at the bottom half of the last inning, and that's what you want to have is a good defense right up the middle. And Manfrey just looks tough. Very much in command, and that just exudes confidence to the rest of the ball players out on the diamond. King, a strikeout victim his first time up, takes low ball one, and it was nice to see him make that play, Kurt, because he uh, he made three of the four errors in that third inning, so Ouch. nice to see him get one back to kind of get his confidence going again. Well, you got to, it's tough. You boot it, as I said before, and you squeeze a little harder to do it. That is eye high, fast, but where are you going? I'm still quick. I still have reaction. Yeah, you do, but you're supposed to. I was ready to catch it, see? Catch it behind me? <laughs> <laughs> I was right there. Okay. Uh, all right. Fastball right back at us, even to the count at one and one. Be nice to see King get a hit here. That one fouled back again, one and two. He's taking some healthy cuts. He's on the fastball, one straight back. And he goes, you come to these ball games, and you've seen your fair share of baseball. Some guy takes a rip at a fastball and fouls it straight back in the screen. That means he is on it. He's been on the last two, so it wouldn't be too surprising if uh, Sturdivant or somebody does something. He just bounced the curveball right now. That's all you got to do. You don't have to go strike three. Just bounce the curveball. Setting up inside. Curve goes outside for a ball. So it's two and two. Two outs. Top of the fifth. Two nothing. Monta Vista. As I said, they're looking to secure a tighter grip on second place in the SCCAL. Run their record to seven and three and get to two games behind Santa Cruz. Well, they they were the ones that stuffed Santa Cruz with the lone league loss, so they want to stay right on the the Cardinals' heels and basically put the put their own destiny right in their hands. They they come up and they skunk Santa Cruz the next two times. It ought to be re you know, they could find themselves in first place and then their last year in the league too. That last fastball went out of the zone. Count runs full now. And there's ball four, so a nice at-bat by Nick King. He fell behind but worked the walk, and that allows Byron Miller to come to the plate. Miller got a hit his first time up. Always a nice time to set the table. Two outs is great. And one thing in, in baseball, the seven, eight, nine guys, you need them. To, if you're going to win anything, 
seven, eight, and nine have to come through at least once in a ball game. Set the table for the top. Quick throw by Manfrey, but King's not going anywhere. He needs to stay right there and hope Miller can drive him in. Curveball across the letters for strike one. High curveball. That's that's not a pitch that you want to go after. You look for a fastball strike or something that hangs about oh thigh high. Something you can get some good aluminum into. Yeah, his first at bat was a base hit off a of fastball. As he grounds this one to the left side. Third baseman Matt Schaefer throws it away. So here's a chance for Harbor now as they've got men on second and third. King all the way around to third. Miller to second on the error. And that'll set it up for their leadoff man, Jeff Moyer. So potential two-out rally now for Harbor. That's what you, you want to see if you are Harbor. And that's part of baseball. And somehow or another, this sport just evens everything out. Haven't figured out how in the world it does it, but it just evens everything out. Certainly neither pitcher to this point has been hit hard. As, we've, as I've said new, numerous times, Miller did not deserve his fate. And certainly Manfrey did his job in getting the ground ball there. Moyer now at the plate, he is one for two. He grounded out to the second baseman in the first and had a single in the fourth. See what he can do here with two ducks on the pond. Manfrey now in the wine. Curveball caught the corner for strike one. And now comes step up time. You've got to be able to step up as a pitcher and go after that last out yourself. And this is part of being a team in baseball. Every once in a while, uh, and the pitcher's the only one where they can have an eye in team because he's the one that's going to throw that rat up there. 0-1 pitch to Moyer forthcoming. Fastball, he swung through it. He may have even taken something off that time. 0-2 now. Looked like he did, Joe. You're right. Just a little bit off the fastball, and you don't have to take much. An inch or two off that fastball, and they can really t upset the hitter's timing. Especially, as I've said twice now with Moyer at the plate, the lefty-lefty matchup is tough. And He's back of the box now. His first at bat, he was in the front of the box, maybe to try and hit that curve before it broke, but he's in the back now, and he's in the hole 0-2. Is that one bounced in the dirt? Yeah, that's not bad. When you've got a catcher back there like Sturdivant, you can afford to bounce one down in the dirt. See if that hitter doesn't go after it and chase it. Bad part about it, swung on a miss strike three. If the catcher doesn't come up clean, you've got to make that final out of the throw out down at first base. Sturdivant did make a nice block last inning to prevent a run. One-two pitch. Swung through and missed for strike three. So Manfrey strikes out the side in the fifth to maintain his shutout, maintain the 2-0 lead for Monta Vista. No runs, two base runners left. Bottom of the fifth, upcoming. To the leadoff hitter for Monta Vista, that's Nick Simpson. Second pitch is lined right back up the box, base hit. Nice piece of hitting by Nick Simpson. So Miller will have to work out of a jam here. He allows the leadoff hitter to reach, and that'll bring up Matt Schaefer, who's one for two. And that's one of the, I, that's as a pitcher, that's the hit that I hated the most. The coming, the one that's coming right back up the pipe. Not so much at me because I can throw a flipper out, and maybe knock it down. The one that's just out of reach because you, unless you're a shortstop or second baseman, are just absolutely phenomenal. Chances of them getting a hard wrap right back up the middle are not real good. Simpson just hit it where it was pitched as that pitch did catch a, a fat part of the plate and he just did what he was supposed to do. Get his first hit of the game. He's one for two now, the sacrifice bunt. Came in hitting 289, so he's on base now for Matt Schaefer. Yeah, that's a good opportunity as part of the order to do some hitting and running. If you don't get picked off first when you're not paying attention. But that was a good hustle back by Simp. Simpson's quick. He's got some good little squicks to him. And one thing about Memo Torres, and we spoke for a while last night, 
is that uh, he likes to put the pressure on the defense. Steals, sacrifice, hit and run. Outside that time, two and one now the count on Schaefer. As Simpson's drawing a lot of attention over there from Miller and the catcher, Jordan McCavitt. Bluffs the punt, pitch in the dirt, three and one now, hitters count. A lot of things Memo Torres can do here. Uh, you can do a straight steal, you can shorten up Memo down there at third base, flashing him around, saying, look at remember, the hit sign, you've got a three one count, so this pitch is a freebie. It better be fastball belt high. And it was, and it's fouled straight back, so the count is full now. As Simpson ran with the pitch that time, and we'll see what Mr. Torres decides to do now on full count, nobody out. If he believes, as he should, that his number two hitter can make contact, then he, he would think he would send Simpson. He does it, pitch fly into right center field, long run. And he gets there, does Darren Thomas to chase it down. So the first out of the inning, that'll bring up the pitcher, Joe Manfred. Schaefer got a great swing on the ball, pitch up, and he drove it well. And Thomas, again, you know, the wind's playing havoc, so that wind basically blew that thing almost all the way over towards right field. Moyer probably could have made an easier play than Thomas, but Thomas was calling for the ball all the way. Manfrey as Simpson runs. Pitch was outside. Not much of a chance for McCavitt to throw out Simpson there as he stole that one on the pitcher. He did that, and 90% of the stolen bases are going to go against the pitcher. We tend to forget you're there. We take too long. We uh, we do a whole bunch of different things that the catcher at home plates, looking out there and watching the runner take off, and the thought I because I've never caught, but I can hear catchers. Come on, throw it. This week would be nice. Come on. Would you get here so at least I could throw it back to you before the guy gets to second base? <laughs> yeah, one of the jobs of a pitcher is to hold that runner, and Miller didn't do it there. Big swing and a miss by Manfrey as he was looking to hit that one out by those trucks out there. Yeah, he, can, he can pop it. Three home runs on the year. He's got good power, and you can see he can really open up that front side. So... If, you come in on him, you better make sure that you've redefined in as in way in. There's one way low, and Simpson thought about going to third, but dives back into second. And Count the, even two and two. Good decision by McKevin. Now, I like Simpson. That's real aggressive baseball. I, I know that's what they teach here at Monta Vista. Ball out in front of the catcher, make that break, keep your eye on it. McKevin did a good job of pouncing on it very quickly. There's a fastball up on the hands, and it goes right over our head. Count remains two and two, one out, bottom of the fifth. Nick Simpson on second, and the pitcher, Joe Manfrey, at the plate. Facing Byron Miller, the Pirates' ace, who started this game and has been impressive. There's a fastball out of the zone, so the count now full. Now, one thing, one place you can almost get away with throwing a left-hander is up and in. Why in the world left-handers love that down and in and can spin on it and just smack it harder than anybody's ever seen? I don't know, but I've gotten away with pitches up like that one right off his fist. Perfect timing for you to say that as he fists it to Nick King at second for the second out of the inning. So a nice piece of pitching by Byron Miller gets the dangerous man free, and that'll bring up Aaron Torchio who reached on an error in the third and was hit by a pitch in the first. Now this is a big out. You want to get the number four hitter. and Of course, Monta Vista would love to get that next run in. Torsia could do it. Looking at the outfield, they're pretty much straight away. Actually, McNulty is shallow out in left field, which is par for the course with a left-hand hitter up and the wind blowing in from left field. There's a... Fly ball hit to the left side, and it is caught by Michael Parker. So a nice play by the Pirate third baseman to get out of the inning. So the leadoff man got on, but Miller did a great job stranding him. At the end of five innings, Monta Vista two, Harbor nothing. <laughs> Hey, check this out. Why do you 
cruise on the boardwalk, book with friends at the beach. Flexible schedule. The league leader in employment for students and athletes. Whiting's Foods, a fun place to work. Check out the website, whitingsfoods.com. Family owned and operated for nearly 50 years. All those at the Yacht Harbor, a tradition for 38 years. My dad built this business by bringing in fresh fish and by making fresh bread, pasta, and raviolis daily. And at Aldo's Bakery, you'll find baked goods fresh every day. My family has been part of the Santa Cruz community for over 50 years. My brother and I played high school sports. Our children are also involved. We know from first-hand experience these programs help our kids develop the confidence needed to move our community into the future. Join us for good things to eat. As a member of Congress, I'm proud to sponsor legislation for Metro Santa Cruz to provide for more buses, to build newer facilities, and best of all, to provide better service on the street. Join me, Congressman Sam Farr, and make the Metro difference. Each year, people in Santa Cruz ride the Metro more than 8 million trips. Why don't you try riding the Metro Transit? Each and every day, Metro improves the quality of life for people in Santa Cruz. Metro makes a difference. There is a better way to have fun with history. Teddy, you're not even trying. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Mama, I played with Natalie today. You did? She looked a lot at my school. She has pretty hair and I like her long hair. Mm -hmm. We played together, we talked together, and we were eating outside and, um, Bugs got on it. Ew. Nah. Ew. They're gonna fly around and get on people's food. Then we killed all the bugs and then it was gone before we know it. One day these rats were playing in the woods. What was the method that's so good? Listen to smoke before you give it a try. Only you. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. Fire. Only you can prevent forest fires. Fire! Big Joe Manfrey on the mound for his sixth inning of work here. He's got five zeros on the board thus far. His Mustangs lead 2-0, and he'll start the six facing the designated hitter, Mike Sintatos, who takes ball one outside. Sintatos 0 for 2 on the day. He struck out in the first and hit a comebacker in the fourth. Waggles the bat, the pitch, fastball right field. Is it fair? Is it foul? Is it catchable? It's foul and not catchable. Evens the count at one and one. You go around the league, Joe, and you, and you look at some of these ballparks, and some of them are great for hitters, and the one that jumps to mind is a game that we did at SoCal. A lot of foul territory. That, that benefits the pitcher. And, of course, Santa Cruz's new diamond, they don't have foul territory. Two strides, and you're on the other side of the fence. Right. So that really benefits the hitter. And this, this park plays pretty fair. That one was down the line, didn't have a lot of height, but had enough distance that it could uh, land foul and give the hitter another opportunity. But one of the things in high school ball, and playing it yourself, is it's more for hitters, because there's just not a lot of, there's, there's no room. There's a fastball fouled back. You're right, that Harvey West had a little bit, but uh, this one certainly is a hitter's park. I actually had mentioned that earlier. That the one thing that made it a pitcher's park today before you got here is it was just blown. The wind was coming straight in our face, but uh, it's died down now, so certainly these conditions are right for hitters, but when there's a man on the mound like Manfrey, it doesn't matter. Now He's got that nice biting little knuckle curveball that comes in there and explodes, and yeah, my hat's off to Sturdivant. You're gonna, you know, when you get somebody like Manfrey, 
up there that you're going to spend a lot of time in the dirt. That uniform will need to be washed. Two to the count here to Sintados leading off the six, trying to reach base to get something going for Harbor. Their bats have been silenced this point, and there still are as a beautiful off-speed breaking pitch there from Manfrey, and that is his seventh strikeout of the game. That'll bring up Blake Thigerson. Well, one thing, in just my brief little peek here at Manfrey, uses his pitches in the plate very well. Off-speed stuff, challenges a hitter, not afraid to challenge hitters, and that means he really trusts his defense. And of course, Schaefer, Glom, Simpson, and Torsio out there, they can throw some pretty good uh, leather at the ball. Thigerson takes a curve in the dirt. The Pirates shortstop, 0 for 2 on the day, as are most of these Pirate hitters. He struck out in the first and grounded to the first baseman, Torchio, in the fourth. Yeah, just watching the, the defense set up. Everybody pretty much playing straight away. Not cheating one way or another. And the quickness up the middle with Simpson and Glahn, they can get to almost anything. Drag bunt pushed over there beautifully by Thigerson, and he'll beat the play. What a bunt by Thigerson for a base hit. That's a good job by Thigerson and Gillette to be able to, Coach John Gillette, to be able to read the defense and realize that everybody's back there. And, of course, it takes that perfect bunt. It's got to be hard enough to get past the pitcher. It's got to be at the right angle that the first baseman's not going to be able to get to it, but soft enough that the shortstop can't get there. And Simpson almost made a super play. One out, one on for Darren Thomas, who had an impressive at bat his last time, eventually drawing a walk in the fourth. He grounded out to the shortstop in the second. thing I like about that play, too, Kurt, is in this era, what you see in the big leagues or the small parks and the big home runs, bunting has become a lost art, and that was just a perfect push drag bunt. He got it past the pitcher, which is what you're trying to do, and just try and beat the second baseman to it, and he just did a perfect job of bunting there. Hey, it was a great job, and I agree with you. The, the art of bunting now is still alive at the, somewhat at the high school level and the collegiate level. Of course, if you've ever gone to the College World Series, you don't see that one very often. Rosenblatt Stadium is also a launching pad. Well, Manfrey has done his job to this point. He's gotten ahead of Thomas 0-2. So the cleanup hitter's got to get his hacks here for Harbor. They're running out of time. They only have five outs left, and they trail 2-0. Thomas waggles the bat, the pitch, curveball, just outside, runner goes, and he is safe. Thigerson beats the throw, pretty good throw from Sturdivant, but Thigerson again got a great jump and a nice slide that time to avoid the tag as well. It looked like Thigerson slid to the outside part of the bag at second base and thereby avoiding the tag of Simpson. Throw by Sturdivant tailed a little bit back towards first base. You hang that rope over the right over second base, and more times than not, you're going to get that guy to slide right into your glove and get that easy out. But good break, good read for Thigerson to get the stolen base. One two pitch, curveball, strike three, swinging. Manfrey with a nice breaker that time, his second strikeout of the inning. Uh, he, Eighth in the game. You look at that curveball, and different p pitchers are all different, and left-handers being one are, can be just a little goofy every once in a while. But he just loves that curveball. He's not afraid to throw it ahead in the count, behind the count. He realizes that, that he's got the hammer, and that's his out pitch. Here's a man who could tie this game up for Harbor with one swing of the bat, Kevin McGuire, who had a double in the second inning, but was thrown out at third when they, they overthrew the cutoff, man. He attempted to go to third and was thrown out, made the first out, or the second out, I should say, of that inning, but uh, that was a tough break for Harbor early, and he grounded out to second base in the fourth. He's got that big strike zone up there, long, lanky kid, but you can see just by watching him, he's, he's all business at the plate. He dials in real quick. And he's got a hitter's count here as 2-0. and oh. So Manfrey, despite the fact he has these zeros up here, he has had some situations he's had to work out of. John Gillette couldn't ask for more opportunities, though. He's got the heart of the lineup up. 
just as he did in the fourth. But Manfrey was able to get out of it, so. Well, right now, you know, ball four, everybody says, well, you don't want to walk anybody in baseball. And for the most part, that's true. But if you're down 3-0, you can the base over there, two outs, and you set yourself up a force out, wouldn't be too bad to walk them. Now, you're not going to do it intentionally. You're going to still come after the challenge, but you're not going to bring the thing right down Broadway. And that was a 3-0 strike that time, but it was on the inside. Nothing McGuire could have done with that had he had the green light. But you're right, with Ryan McNulty on deck, a left-handed hitter, Manfrey can be careful here. There was a fastball right over the heart. Manfrey got away with a mistake there, and it lands just near our truck over there. So now the count full with two outs. Now, so you look at the expression on McGuire's face. And that expression was, I missed it. I had it, it was here, and I missed it. And with somebody like Manfrey, his young left-hander, you're not going to get too many presents served up to you. And that was a gift. 3-2 pitch. Got him swinging, took something off. He strikes out the side for the second consecutive inning. Nine strikeouts for Manfrey. Impressive outing for the left-hander. He's gone six. They still lead 2-0, bottom of the sixth, upcoming. It's Colby Beeson to lead off. Byron Miller still on the hill for Harvard. Curveball outside, ball one. Yeah, nice little sw big sweeping curveball. Not a lot of down break to it, but a whole bunch of a cross break. Beeson one for two, a single, and he reached on an air. Swung through that one, even the count at one and one. Now we mentioned the wind and the fact that uh, Manfrey's got a, a great deuce going. I mean, just a super curveball. There's one hit up the middle for a base hit. So Beeson two for three on the day, starts the sixth off with a base hit up the middle. That'll bring up the catcher, Jake Sturdivant. And we mentioned before that wind and knuckleballs are not exactly really good friends, but if you're a pitcher out there and wind blowing in a little bit from left field, actually more like straight in, but either way, a little bit more from the left side than anything else, that helps the bite on a left-handed curveball. It hurts the bite on a right-handed curveball. tends to flatten it out just a little bit. Sturdivant bluffed the bunt, took a ball outside. So Memo Torres looking to add to this lead, and with the leadoff man on, he can do all sorts of things. Looks like he'd like to bunt, but Miller has to comply by throwing a strike. Uh, you always want to get one more run. The, the more you can get as you head into that last frame, the better. There's one up the middle over the head of Miller, but it could be two, no. Nice play by King to get the force. So Sturdivant now the runner instead of Beeson. One out for Brock Lindeke. Yeah, King doing a nice job of coming in. Really did not give Thigerson much of a flip for him to do anything. And of course, it, Beeson doing a nice job of getting down to second base in a big hurry. But to successfully turn that double play, you need that good feed in there so you can get your footwork right and get rid of the ball. There's a big sweeper of a curve for strike one. Lindeke has flown out twice to Moyer in right field, an indication of Miller's velocity is he's not been able to pull anything from the big right-hander. He's got some good stuff out there, and he's got that big sweeper. There's a big curve in his eyes, though, and he smoked that one past the third baseman, Parker. Not much he could do there as that ball was all over him. So first and second, one out, Jimmy Garcia will be at the plate. You now Brock saw a Christmas present in April. A big hanging curve ball that stopped up and slightly in and he did a nice job of turning on that thing and just drilling it down the third base line. And I always wonder about these guys that play third base for a living. See, first base, it's okay. You get an occasional big left-handed hitter, but they're rare. Now you guys that play third base, you get a whole bunch of right-hand hitters and you're playing even with the bag and you got to charge for bunts, and you're taking your life in your hands. Got some changes here, Kurt. Number two, John Ryan goes in to run for Sturdivant, and the pinch hitter now at the plate is Mike Turner, so he'll be up there for Jimmy Garcia in a 2 nothing game, two on, one out. Turner gets a chance. He's hitting 241 on the season. 
Fastball, he chops it to the right side. It'll be a tough play for Thigerson. He charges and has to eat it up. Infield single for Turner. Bases loaded, one out. That'll go down as a seeing eye base hit. And of course, by the time he gets home, it'll be a rocket off the left field wall. But it doesn't matter as long as you can get on base and hit that ball effectively. That's a tough one, and he hit it perfectly. A little bit too hard for the pitcher Miller to get there. Of course, the, the middle was playing for double play. They wanted to see if they could turn it. Now everybody's going to be in tight, cutting off the run, trying to cut the run off at home plate. And another pinch hitter, this is Keith Shively, who takes a strike on the corner, so he's hitting for the shortstop, Chase Glom. Glom ends the day 0 for 2. He did score a run, first run of the game. Shively hits a chopper. King gloves it, throws to McGuire. They get the out, but a run scores. The pinch runner, Ryan, crosses the plate with the third run of the game for Monta Vista, so Shively did his job. It wasn't pretty, but effective. Yeah, uh, that was an Astro dirt base hit. He hit it off that hard concrete right in front of home plate, and that's what all of it took. There was no way in the world King was going to be able to make the play at home plate. Back to the top of the order now with Nick Simpson. Monta Vista has two ducks on the pond for him there at second and third. Linda Key and Turner and a 3-0 lead. Simpson ahead now 2-0. Now's the time for Miller. He's going to have to go back to eyeball, which is, means I have to get the out. Pop him up, strike him out, but this hitter's got to be his. There's a fastball fouled on the right side, so a 2-0 pitch that time. He had a good look at it. Couldn't put it in play, two and one. And he's got to be able to battle back. And Miller's a good pitcher. He's been in this situation before, so he's not a stranger to this type of pressure. There's one fouled right over our head, so he gets ahead now. Should be one and two on the scoreboard. They've got two and one. Two outs, two on, bottom of the six, three nothing, Monta Vista. Now it's basically challenge time. Try and tie him up inside. Fastball, he got too much of the plate that time, and that's a gapper. That'll go to the wall. Both runs will score. It'll be a two-run double for Simpson, and it's 5 nothing. Monta Vista as the Mustangs break it open in the sixth. Joe, you're right on the money. He threw that. He was trying to go inside. McCavitt had set up inside, but that fastball split right to the home plate. And he had about eight inches on both sides of the black part of home plate. Simpson did not waste any time with it. I mean, he just punished that ball. Linda Key and Turner scored for Monta Vista, so it's 5 nothing. And now it's Matt Schaefer at the plate. Schaefer one for three on the day. Singled in the first, reached on an error in the third, flew out in the fifth. Just missed the corner, 2-0 and oh now. Yeah, pretty good pop on that fastball. You can see he still has a lot of energy in the fastball. Pitchers, when you start to get tired, <laughs> and that time Schaefer was going for the downs on a pitch, going running away from him. He's going to realize a little cut fastball from a right-hander is not coming back. <laughs> and again, Kurt Miller has had tough luck. The four errors in the third led to two runs. And really, these last two have only been the ones that have been hit hard. Everything else has been a bleeder. This will score a run. A nice piece of hitting by Schaefer. Simpson around to score. Four in the inning. Six runs now for Monta Vista. And an RBI for Schaefer, his second hit of the day. Yeah, location is it. When you start to get tired as a pitcher, you tend to lose that location, the ability to get the ball down low in the strike zone. You may still have the velocity on the pitch that you had several innings ago, but it's that ability to get it where you want to. And those last couple of rips, this last one by Schaefer and the one previous to that, the double by Simpson, have been up in the strike zone and right down the middle of the plate. And it looks like we're going to have a pitching change. McNulty's coming in from left field, and Miller's headed out towards left field. So, I mean, that makes my defensive chart look real easy to do this. Yeah, that is. While we have this pitching change, we'll take a quick break. 6 nothing, Monta Vista, bottom of the sixth. They're looking for more. Thank you. 
American Writers 2, the 20th century, C-SPAN's critically acclaimed series continues its journey from the jazz age through Vietnam. Our history seen through the lives and works of America's most influential writers. Live Sundays, 3 p.m. Eastern and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern. American Writers 2, the 20th century on C-SPAN. You should know that Scarborough Lumber is one of the oldest and most community-oriented businesses in our region. From Pop Warner to the new Scott Valley Falcons to the San Lorenzo Valley Cougars and Cabrillo College, Scarborough is there providing resources and support. Scarborough Lumber and Building Supply is involved because sports helps develop leadership and responsibility with our young people. From their garden store to lumber to hardware to building supplies, Scarborough Lumber and Building Supply is working to make our community stronger and better. For nearly 30 years, spa fitness centers have been serving Santa Cruz County with the finest facilities available. If you're thinking of joining a health club, the time is now. No need to wait. We're ready now. Sign up now to join the area's most modern sports facility. Get one month for just $30. If your sports club is letting you down, sign up now at your nearby spa fitness center. Spa fitness center. Often imitated, but never duplicated. There are two King's Paint stores to serve you in Santa Cruz County with quality products at prices lower than box stores. He runs the SoCal store and tries to tell his brother Ron what to do. He never listens to me. Ron doesn't like to talk on TV. You'll find the best paints always at the lowest prices at King's Paint and Paper. They'll compete with anybody. Isn't that right, Ron? King's Paint and Paper, two great locations locally owned for 20 years. I should kill O'Neill for rat. Don't be s Back at Mustang Field, Joel Domhoff alongside Kurt Edwards. New pitcher in the game for Harbor is Ryan McNulty. You can see why John Gillette brought him in. He's left-handed. The next two hitters, Manfrey and Torchio, also lefty. So see what they can do, lefty, lefty. That one's fouled straight back, so McNulty gets ahead. Now they went power against power. McNulty comes up with a fastball. It's up. Manfrey, no stranger to swinging the bat. He got that aluminum around, but just pulled it foul. Manfrey, four home runs on the year. He's hitting 429. There's a curveball high, evens the count, one and one. You know, I like that pitch. Everybody, I love the stands. You know, sitting in your ear, oh, wow. Mm, then a... He probably didn't want to throw it there, but, you know, as a purpose pitch, fine. Now throw the next curveball and hammer it down and away. That's where he went, but it was too far that direction. Ball two. Two and one. Two outs. Man on first. Monta Vista, four runs in the inning to take a 6 nothing lead. You know, some hitters you can get in the rocking chair, and then there's people like your brother that tried to put in the rocking chair, and he put me in the old folks home. <laughs> And there's a huge jump by Schaefer that time and a great pitch to run on as it was another curve in the dirt. Easy stolen base, so three and one count for Manfrey with another man in scoring position. Yeah, that time it looked like McNulty just flat forgot he had a runner over at first base. Cardinal Sin, left-hander, you're looking at him. There's ball four. Oh, they call it a strike, a late call. <laughs> but... Certainly McNulty and the Pirates will take it, but it did get away from the catcher, McCavitt, so advancing to third is Schaefer. That's one of those where the catcher, McCavitt, is kind of going, really? Okay, fine, I'll, 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 I'll go get it. And, of course, McNulty's going, cool, I'll take that pitch. 3-2-2 Three, two, two outs, McNulty from the wind. Curveball, he fought it off, did Manfrey, had him out in front. Nice pitch by McNulty and a nice job by Manfrey to get a piece. He really had Manfrey out on that front foot. In fact, that curveball hung up there a little bit higher than he wanted to, and it was a nice piece of hitting by Manfrey just to fight it off to live another pitch. And he does something with that pitch. That pitch is hit way out to center field, but the wind brings it back. It looked impressive early, but it's nothing but a fly out. Inning finally ends for Monta Vista. They put four runs on the board to take a 6-0 lead to the seventh. At the end of six, all Monta Vista.
on the boardwalk, work with friends at the beach, flexible schedules, the league leader in employment for students and athletes, Whiting's Foods, a fun place to work. Check out the website, whitingsfoods.com, family owned and operated for nearly 50 years. Aldo's at the Yacht Harbor, a tradition for 38 years. My dad built this business by bringing in fresh fish and by making fresh bread, pasta, and raviolis daily. And at Aldo's Bakery, you'll find baked goods fresh every day. My family has been part of the Santa Cruz community for over 50 years. My brother and I played high school sports. Our children are also involved. We know from first-hand experience these programs help our kids develop the confidence needed to move our community into the future. Join us for good things to eat. American Writers 2, the 20th century, C-SPAN's critically acclaimed series continues its journey from the jazz age through Vietnam. Our history seen through the lives and works of America's most influential writers. Live Sundays, 3 p.m. Eastern and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern. American Writers 2, the 20th century on C-SPAN. There is a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Top of the seventh here from Mustang Field, and Joe Manfrey looking to put the finishing touches on a four-hit shutout. He's got a ground ball hit to the right side, and over there is Nick Simpson. One up, one down, and Manfrey has been dominant, folks. How dominant? The last six outs prior to the one you just saw were strikeouts. He has nine strikeouts on the day, two outs away from a four-hit shutout. And he's been impressive for Memo Torres. He's done a great job. He can flat deal. It's been a couple of weeks since he uh, got that start. And I asked Memo, I said, is that going to affect him any, getting deep into the game? And Memo said, no, I don't think so. He's been running. He's been throwing. He's got a lot of rest. He should not be tired. And crying out loud, he's throwing the ball. He's got great rhythm. And he is just making it very difficult for the Harbor Pirates to really get a good look at him. Jordan McCavitt, the hitter for... Harbor. He is 0 for 2 with a strikeout today. And there's a ball fouled off, so quickly ahead is Manfrey 0 and 2. And Kurt, before you got here, I saw a memo before the game, and in talking to him, they weren't sure if Manfrey was good to go today. He was kind of stiff, loosening up, and they, they had to double check with him, and it was kind of a last minute decision to start him. And I guess he got loose. I guess so. <laughs> it is nice decision by Memo Torres and Freddie Martinez and the rest of the crew down there. Freddie Martinez, the pitching coach. Hey, you know, more times than not, you get in the bullpen and you, you just can't quite get loose. Nice knuckleball. 0-2 pitch. Nice piece of hitting, but nice piece of fielding as well. Simpson picked it up. So back-to-back -back grounders to the second baseman for Monta Vista. And Manfrey one out away from a four-hit shutout. He'll face Nick King, who is 0 for 1. He struck out in the third and walked in the fifth. Now you get in the your, your adrenaline may start be pumping in the bullpen, but I guarantee you it starts really flowing when you get in the game. Monta Vista trying to break a three-game losing streak. Check that four-game losing streak to Harbor. Mon Harbor had their number to this point, but today it's been all Joe Manfrey and the Mustangs. So. One out away from securing, as I said, a tighter grip on second place. The pitch in on his fist, and it'll go out of play. Again, a close call for Kerry Rognaby, our cameraman on the first base side there. So the count evened up, one and one. You know, the great thing about that for Kerry, he never saw it. <laughs> Wouldn't have mattered whether he hit him or not. He never saw it. Looks like the venerable John Boucher, our camera operator down the third base line. Doing a usual, as usual, great job. Big hook that time, missed out. 
inside and a bit high. You can see the catcher, Jake Sturdivant, turning around and asking the home plate umpire, where exactly was that? Because you've been giving us that most of the day and that looked pretty darn good. So the umpire giveth, the umpire taketh away. 2-1 pitch to King. That one's fouled up in the air. Will it stay in play? It will not. And another close call, that time for Ricky Amato over there, our cameraman. Count evened up at 2-2, two and two, so Manfrey could close it in style now with a big K. It would be his 10th of the game. Certainly the Monta Vista crowd that is gathered here on this gorgeous, sometimes breezy, gusty day. Sometimes. Oh, the middle three innings, we had a nice little lull there, but yeah. the beginning and the end, of we've, we've yeah. seen Mother Nature come. The beautiful valley has reared its head. 2-2 two -two pitch to King. Hook. Oh, fastball stayed high. Little something. Maybe a curve that didn't curve. Looked like a <laughs> curveball that uh, didn't have any hammer action to it. Slipped out of his hands and just stayed away. Nice opportunity for a fastball right underneath the paws. You can jam him, pop him up, or, you know, strike him out, but it looks like they're going to try and go away. Full count pitch, and he lost him. So another nice at bat for King, and we're not supposed to root up here, but I was rooting for that kid after that third inning, and he's come back well at the plate with two walks. If he just joined us, four harbor errors in the third inning led to two Monta Vista runs, and the pirate pitcher Byron Miller really deserved better. He pitched into the sixth, went five and two-thirds, impressive pitching. And Monta Vista poured it on in the sixth with a couple of couple of choppers, a couple of bleeders, ducks, whatever you want to call them, and it all led to a four-run six. So uh, really, if you look at the score, you wouldn't know how well-pitched this game was, but Byron Miller certainly deserves our applause as much as Joe Manfrey does. Well, Byron threw five very good innings that uh, sixth inning the ball started to straighten out a little bit on him and come up in the strike zone and even some of the great ones randy johnson when he gets that ball up in the strike zone tends to get it hammered on him a little bit but now miller's got a chance to atone for some of those hits that he had there in the in the bottom of the sixth inning with a base wrap here he took the words right out of my mouth redemption time is here for miller he's one for two on the day He's hit the ball hard twice. Singled in the third and reached on an error in the fifth. I'm watching Manfrey the last couple. And pitchers have a tendency to come in and out of sync. And right now Manfrey's not really following through, bringing that arm down and across the body. So he's leaving the ball up and away. There's a curve. He got on top of that one to even it at one and one. Kurt, I didn't throw a whole lot of gems in my day as a pitcher, but I know the one or two that I was fortunate enough to get, you'd get to this point with two outs and it's so close. Oh, it's it, right there and you do start to overthrow and you do start thinking, I got a shutout, I got a shutout. And that's what happens. So certainly what's going going on with Manfrey is understandable. Oh yeah, you, you get to that point where you want to preserve the shutout. And that other little voice on the other shoulder has got to come through and say, stay within yourself, throw your ball game. Don't you, aim it. Don't aim it. You've gotten 20 outs to this point. Don't goof it up and try and not be able to get number 21. He's forcing it a little bit. He's gone three and one here to Miller, and Miller jogs down to his coach, third base coach and head coach, John Gillette. Is he telling him to swing here or telling him to take and make uh, Manfrey throw two strikes? Now you've got to make Manfrey throw two strikes. I mean, it, the one thing, at, high, at the high school and college level, I can almost tell you what he's saying. It, your pitch, ball down the middle, BP fastball, yours go get it. But at this point in time, you know, they're down by six. They, they need base runners. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see the handcuffs go on. And I know the hitting philosophy in this situation, too, is always you'll see the same pitch at 3-2 that you'll see here at 3-1 if, oh. he, if he can get it across. So you're not really you know, giving much up by taking one here. No, he, he's going to come with what he feels is his, his, his bread and butter pitch, which has gotten him this far. 3-1 pitch. Fastball high, ball four. So two-out rally for Harbor. He got two ground outs to the second baseman and... The Joe Manfrey fan club to our left is 
getting vocal here as Memo Torres is coming to get him. Six and two thirds of shutout ball for Manfrey. Unable to complete the shutout as Harbor gets two two out walks. And now the leadoff hitter Jeff Moyer will step in and it looks like number 12 for Monta Vista will attempt to get him out. That is Paul Shively. So Memo looking to exploit the lefty. No, he's right-handed. Shively had that glove on his other hand yeah, when he first came out. And, and Messing a long with day. Up here. Well, that's easy to do with that knife. Yeah, that's true. Well, you always hate to see it, but it, it is a coach. And at any level, maybe not so much in the, when you're getting paid a couple of gazillion dollars to do this, but at this level, you like to see the young pitchers get the complete game, get that shut out, but you also want to be able to preserve the win. So if, if Memo Torres felt, hey, you know, he's actually lost it, I really do not want to see Harbor come back in this thing by any stretch of the imagination. Let, let me go to a fresh arm. Get Paul out there, right-hander, brand new, give it a different look, mix it up a little bit, maybe we can get out of this thing and still hold the shutout. Unfortunately, Manfrey doesn't get that complete game. Yeah, and as you said, Kurt, trying to save the shutout, but at the other end, you want to save the kid's arm. If he's getting tired, as he clearly was, his mechanics start to fall off a bit, and then his arm's at the wrong angle, and there's potential there for injury. So a fan wants to see the shutout, but a realist understands that... Uh, yeah, he's got a lot more innings to pitch, and you want to save his arm as well as save the game. And I just want to mention at this point, John Gillette told me before the game, in the SECAL this year, don't leave until the final out. <laughs> the way things have gone with extra innings, and of course his team had two one-run losses last week, including one in nine innings to Aptos. So he said his team, they, he loves them because they're just a resilient group of kids, and they're showing that here with this last ditch rally well there's your never this is one great thing about baseball and, and our soul softball there's not a time limit there may be a sun limit but there's not a time limit you've got to get all of the outs and there's plenty of sun left so harbor certainly doesn't face darkness here strike one there as shively gets ahead of moyer the pirate right fielder is one for three on the day he grounded out in the first singled in the fourth struck out in the fifth. Shively's got some hop on the fastball, jams him. It's going to be a play at second, and it's converted easily by Simpson to Torchio, and that'll do it. So Paul Shively does his job, preserves the shutout. Mana Vista with a 6 nothing victory over Harbor. They go to 7-3 and three in league play, depending on what happened with Santa Cruz and Aptos today. Monta Vista could be as little as a game and a half now out behind Santa Cruz, but at the very least, they're two games up in the lost column for second. So an impressive outing for Memo and, and his team, certainly Joe Manfrey, the star today. Oh, he's, he did a great job on the hill, getting 20 out of the 21 needed out, needed outs. And of course, Ivy comes in, gets a little bit extra on that fastball. And it, what wins baseball games? Yeah, if you score more runs than the other team, it does. Defense, 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 and doggone good pitching. We saw that today, and some timely hitting as they benefited from the errors in the third, but then in the sixth, a big two-run double by Nick Simpson. Matt Schaefer chipped in an RBI single. It all adds up to a Monta Vista day, a Monta Vista victory. That's going to do it for us. I believe we'll be back with the player of the game. 6 nothing for Mustang Field. Back in just a moment. Back at Mustang Field, Joel Domhoff alongside Kurt Edwards, and in between us, the player of the game, Joe Manfrey, the pitcher for the Mustangs. The big junior did it all, six and two-thirds shutout innings. They went at six nothing, and Joe, despite the six and two-thirds, the first question I want to ask you, how bad did you want to finish that baby off? Um, in my high school career, I don't think I've ever thrown a complete game, and I wanted it really bad today, really, really, really bad. But I just, I couldn't stay in there. I don't know what happened. That's all right. You had nine strikeouts on the day, and I'm going to let Kurt ask you a couple questions. Joe, coming in, you were warming up. I understand you're having a tough time getting loose. Whose decision was it for you to start, and by the way, was the right decision? Um, Coach Memo just wanted me on the hill this game. This is a really important game for league standing and stuff. 
so I feel like I wanted to pitch today. So I told him I wanted to pitch, and he said I could. So that's what happened. Well, you look you look real good out there, and you had all of your pitches going. Give me your best pitch that you like to throw consistently, and give me the pitch that you know that you can throw a strike with, and why? Uh, I like to throw my knuckleball today. It, it moves a lot. And the pitch I like to throw is the outside fastball. It was working for me today, and the umpire was giving it to me, so I just kept throwing it. Yeah, I noticed there was one. He threw an outside pitch, and he didn't give it to you. Yeah, that was the curveball. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it was a strike, but I guess he thought it was a little outside, so can't worry about that. Just got to keep pitching. Now, you got to keep pitching. You're doing a great job. You're averaging a strikeout an inning. Not bad. I think I averaged a strikeout a game, but that's when the balls didn't come out, and aluminum bats were nothing to be found, and, you know, all kinds of other things. Hitting-wise, you've been doing a pretty good job of the stick. A little off today. Talk to me about uh, the hitting practice you guys go through. Um, could we coach pitches to us in batting practice? Today we were in the locker room getting dressed, and coach told me my uh, batting average, and I think it kind of jinxed me, but... <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just try to go out there and hit the ball hard when I can, and I'm seeing the pitches pretty well. I just couldn't get the couldn't get those line drives today. Well, they'll fall in another time, and uh, I really enjoyed watching you pitch. You really put on a great show, Joel. Here's I'll give you the last question if you want it. All right, I actually do have one more question for you. Seemed to me, what?